jump in coronavirus cases, county board extends state of emergency not safer at home, driver airlifted to freighter following rollover. These and other local stories are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS-TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Pfister, and this is Community News Review for Thursday, May 21st, 2020. Five active cases of COVID-19 were added to the Sheboygan County running total of coronavirus in the last 24 hours, raising the active total to nine out of 77 confirmed, and another 79 persons tested yesterday were negative for the disease. And there are no active cases currently needing hospitalization. 65 Sheboygan County residents have recovered from the illness. Across Wisconsin, trends going in, are going in the wrong direction. Among the record, 6,581 persons being tested, 528 returned positive results, raising the state's total to 13,413. And con counting. For the second consecutive day, a rise in the percentage of positive test returns, now reading 8%. That rising trend, along with an increase in the number of healthcare workers coming up positive for the virus, is counter to the results sought by the state of Wisconsin that would indicate success against the pandemic. 14 more persons in, in the state have died of COVID-19 since yesterday. The Sheboygan County Board late last night extended the county's state of emergency, a measure that does not extend the governor's safer at home order, but that does keep the county prepared for the changing face of the ongoing pandemic. Resolution number one, and it's known past 20 to five after being amended to affirm the safer at home is a thing of the past and no new orders or restrictions are imposed on individuals, churches, businesses, or community activities. The resolution does support the reopening of businesses, nonprofits, and other facilities that are open to the public. And should a surge in COVID-19 cases overwhelm hospital, hospital resources, the county public health officer will be authorized to take measures needed to control the coronavirus. Those measures can include restrictions similar to those imposed in the statewide in March. And Sheboygan County Administrator Adam Payne said hopefully that is something we will not have to worry about. But the resolution still prepares the country for any eventuality. The county board's approach emphasizes the importance of individuals and businesses taking responsibility. One person was seriously hurt in a rollover crash on I-43 on Tuesday evening. The Sheboygan County Department Sheriff's Department got a call about a rollover on I-43 northbound at Row Road around 10.30 at night. The driver had to be airlifted from the scene and taken to Freighter Hospital with life-threatening injuries. Deputies say the 21-year-old man from Milwaukee is facing OWI charges and he was driving without a license. Crews working on several road projects will no doubt be welcome the dry weather that should allow process and progresses over the coming days. The Wisconsin DOT began working yesterday on the Penn Avenue Bridge to complete concrete standing that began last fall. One lane is closed in each direction and will be closed between Commerce and Water Streets, but traffic will be still be able to cross the bridge. The work should be completed sometime tomorrow, weather permitting, and Salmon Avenue is closed between North 21st and 22nd Streets for underground construction in advance of the asphalt overlay. Detours will change and will be post posted as needed. While residents will have driveway access, that work should take about two weeks. Maintenance crews are also completing bridge 
deck epoxy overlays on I-43 between County Highways J and O between 5 a.m. and 7 p.m. today, requiring the various lane closures and closing ramps. Those include the northbound I-43 off-ramp and the 42 on the southbound, I-43 on-ramp from 42, and the Highway 23 on-ramps to I-43 northbound. The Sheboygan River remains above flood stage and it will not return within its banks until at least Friday morning. That according to the hydrolysis at the National Weather Service, levels measured near Esslinging Park remained at about eight and a half feet this morning and flood stage says eight feet and, and minor flooding takes place at six feet a level likely to be exceeded until around 5 o'clock on Friday morning. Docks along Sheboygan's riverfront are likely to be at risk, though sometime Thursday. At the same time, ponding will probably last longer on the saturated soils, soils providing breeding grounds for the mosquitoes and delaying crop work during the critical planting season. Keeping hospital capacity above for treating COVID-19 patients has been a key push during the pandemic, but decreasing patient volumes and fewer emergency department visits are not all good news. Hospital Sisters Health System, or HSHS, which operates Sheboygan's St. Nicholas Hospital, says a, nation, a national trend caused by the people delaying need care because of coronavirus shutdown and worries of contracting the disease. Dr. Kyle McCarty, an American medicine physici physician with HSHS hospitals, says people should never forego or delay in emergency medical care, even in the middle of a pandemic. McCarty said that the hospitals have always taken procedures and measures to prevent the spread of disease, and now including COVID-19 and the emergencies do not take a break. He said that anyone with troubling systems or injury should seek immediate attention and call 911 if needed. And finally, six local nonprofits are among 83 Wisconsin organizations receiving grants from Alliant Energy Foundation, those receiving part of the ever $76,000 awarded yesterday are above and beyond Corporations 2020, STEAM Summer Boot Camp, or STEAM Summer Camps Program, Big Brother Big Sister of Sheboygan County's Project Reach, Making Spirits Bright, Sheboygan's National Inventors Hall of Fame, the New Hope Pregnancy Center of Sheboygan, and the Reigns Equine Assisted Learning Program for the at-risk youth of Sheboygan Falls. The grants help fund projects in areas of helping families, education, environment, and public safety. Executive Director Alliant Energy Foundation Julie Bauer said that the Alliant aims to support their customers and the communities they serve in creative ways and to help make life better for others. And that is our report for today. Join me again on Tuesday for more local news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.